Hello, good morning. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> my, my name is Dionysis Vulgaris from AS Papadimitriou Law Firm in Athens. It's, it's, it's a great honor to be here today and, and moderate this real estate and infrastructure panel. Uh, and thank you, Mrs. and Mr. Bornozzi, for one more exceptional Capital Link Forum. So following uh, a recessionary period uh, during which Greece bottomed out, the two last couple of years, 2017-2018, brought a number of, of reasons for optimism, uh, including the, the stabilization in, in the real estate market and the timid return of foreign investors in the Greek property market. <clears throat> The real estate market now still remains far from being uniform uh, and, and there are still tax, sub, uh, significant tax burdens and bureaucratic rigidities that may still be there, but uh, uh, on the same time it, it presents some characteristics that may, may, may give us reasons to be optimistic for the future. So. There are no other people than the people standing here in, in, in this panel today that may better give us uh, an overview of, of, the, of the key dynamics of the Greek real estate market. So from my left to my, to, 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 from my right to my left, Mr. Dimitris Andriopoulos is the CEO of Demand SA on, uh, of the big construction and development companies in Greece. Mr. George Hrisikos, CEO of Grivalia Properties. Mr. Aristotelis Karitinos, CEO of Pangea, uh, two uh, of the biggest uh, uh, real estate investment companies in Greece. And Mr. Christopher Baldwin, the managing director and head of real estate of Nomura. So this panel is a question and answer panel, so it should be made interactive. So. Uh, at any time, you can interrupt and ask your question or, or have any kind of ref remark. Uh, if I may, I, I, I will start, unless anyone has already questions for the panelists, I will start with, with my own. So, Mr. Mr. Baldwin, can you give us, sorry, Baldwin, can you give us an insight to the global and the European perspective uh, and, and how a global and European environment may influence real estate in Greece? Sure. Um, by the way, can people hear? Yeah. No. It's, uh, I'll try to speak very loudly. I, I think basically what we, I think, need to do is divide the strategic um, framework into twofold. One would be the things that Greece can manage in and of itself to promote uh, FDI and promote investment uh, into the Greek economy. The second would be externalities that are driven away from Greece and are imposed uh, you know, on the rest of the world, be they driven from Washington, driven from uh, the EU, uh, driven by tariff wars and whatnot. Uh, I think that Greece is viewed by the more savvy, smart investors in real estate as a place to look, as a place to make investments. We have a couple of notable examples, not surprisingly in the hospitality space. Oak Tree, brilliant investor, uh, they're investing uh, in Greece. We all know of the Four Seasons Project uh, as well uh, that's happening in Greece. We're seeing a migration of non-performing loan assets in Greek banks uh, slowly, gingerly, but nonetheless there's evidence of it uh, to smart investors who've done their homework. What's important is that the government has been very smart in some respects of promoting privatization of key assets that will drive recurring investment into the country, especially as it relates to transportation. Uh, and the fact of the matter is God had a great day when he made Greece uh, for the purposes of tourism. Yeah. Unfortunately, and this is my final comment on this particular point, uh, and by the way, we see this in hotel performance, we see this in hotel yields. Uh, you know, Greece is, uh, is performing quite well when you take a look at um, constrained supply 
increased demand and unfortunately for Europe, fortunately now for Greece, there are any number of drivers, externalities that will be pushing more tourism to Greece. You know, just you know, one example might be a family from the United States planning a trip to Europe. There are any number of jurisdictions that have been overvisited or quite frankly are not all that welcoming. We all read the newspaper. Uh, but Greece certainly is looking like it's going to be the uh, beneficiary of some of those externalities. Thank you. Uh, if I may now turn to Mr. Karitinos. Mr. Karitinos, uh, uh, according to some analysts, there is uh, a trend that reflects a, a, a rebound of Greece for, for non-Greek foreign investors. Uh, so is, is, is the Greek real estate market really attracting foreign investors in, in real estate transactions? Uh. So, um, the answer is yes. Actually, um, as Christopher said, we have seen some remarkable examples of uh, foreign investors uh, that uh, have invested and very successfully in Greece. Uh, not so many for the time being. But um, as uh, the macro story becomes more attractive, I think this uh, will... Uh, 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 will start happening, uh, you see, more frequently. And uh, uh, what I want to point out is that the, the investors' interest was always there, but it's uh, not uh, uh, so easy to convert this interest into real business in Greece. So we hope that uh, this will uh, start, uh, uh, you see, happening uh, more often for Greece. Um, and um, uh, definitely, during the last uh, few years, we see this uh, foreign interest uh, to grow and uh, to be uh, uh, materialized into real business. Um, we can see that not only in hospitality, but in the real estate sector as well. Uh, we see that uh, New companies are created, new REITs are uh, uh, appearing. Uh, Brevan Howard, for example, is a new uh, name that appears in the Greek market uh, with uh, intentions to invest more than uh, 250 million in the Greek market in real estate. And I think this is driven uh, as well by the supply that we expect to come in the market through the NPLs, which uh, is... Uh, 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 you see a unique source of uh, more supply in the real estate market because the Greek market was always lacking this kind of supply and this was one of the main reasons that uh, you cannot see the big names of real estate investing uh, to come to invest in Greece. So uh, gradually, I think, and for the, for the next few years, where uh, the banks or the funds that are buying from the banks, MPLs, were deploy, you see, uh, these, uh, uh, these investments, uh, these real estate uh, collaterals to the market, uh, will uh, uh, definitely, this will be uh, the, the driver for uh, an increased demand by funds that will come in the, in the Greek markets. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chrysikos, uh, uh, according to, 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 to the Greek, to the Bank of Greece, uh, numbers. The, it seems to, that, that there is uh, twice as much transactions uh, of real estate in comparison to the two first months in 2017 with 2018. So can, can, can you give us an, an overview of the 2018 real estate market in Greece uh, per sector or you know, vacancy yields and wh what are the main characteristics of the real estate sector? Yes, uh, thank you. First of all, I would like to, to thank uh, Mr. Bornozis for the kind invitation to, uh, to participate in this panel. Uh, now, going into your comment, um, we have to, to realize that uh, uh, Greece is moving ahead. Uh, the country risk has significantly decreased the last years, and that uh, makes uh, the country much more friendlier to institutional investors to deploy capital in the real estate. Uh, 
if we look on to the level of the transactions, uh, is increasing year by year. The main drivers is, uh, are the, the Greek REITs that they are deploying uh, a capital in a steady base for the last uh, four years now. And as uh, Aris mentioned, we have some newcomers that either uh, creating uh, similar platforms or they're doing it uh, through different uh, structures. But the activity and the volumes uh, is going to increase over time. Uh, if we look into the real sector in general, I would say that uh, we have seen uh, a very positive movement in the prime commercial real estate. Uh, offices have uh, started to, to react first. I think the yields there have uh, lowered significantly from uh, previous years. And so now we're talking about uh, yields in the range of uh, 7 to 8%. Uh, if you remember two, three years ago, we were uh, talking about uh, yields close to double digits. Uh, retail uh, has uh, also shown some uh, signals of recovery, especially in the, in the very high street uh, retail areas of, uh, of Athens and Thessaloniki. Ermu is uh, rebounding uh, fast, both in demand and uh, in uh, sales volumes. And uh, also logistics uh, is uh, another uh, area that uh, we have seen. Uh, yields remaining stable, but the rents to start picking up slowly, slowly. The hospitality sector is a sector that uh, is uh, doing extremely well. Uh, there are new brands uh, coming into the market for the first time. Four Season is about to open this summer in Asteros Vuliagmenis. Uh, we have uh, already a strong presence from uh, the Marriott Group that has announced uh, several transactions in, uh, in Greece. Uh, Hyatt is, uh, is back. Uh, we are also discussing from the Grivalia Hospitality arm, uh, partnering up with uh, two, three of these uh, global brands to, to bring them into our country and uh, elevate the, the quality of the product that uh, we are offering. Thank you. Now, uh, the, the, for, for the Greek crisis, what, what we, we heard a lot is that the Greek crisis was, uh, uh, was a source of profit, but also a source of, of, of possible changes for, for the Greek market. Now, Mr. Andriopoulos, do you think that, that the Greek construction and development sector uh, seized that opportunity to change uh, in a way for, for a better future? First of all, I have no idea about the construction market. I'm not a contractor, a I'm, a, I'm a developer. It's a different business. Uh, part of the crisis in our sector was that the last 30 years, contractors were mixing the business with development, development yeah. which are two separate uh, you know, DNAs. Uh, this is over now. So yes, in development, there is an opportunity Based on the McKinsey presentation, and if we trust the numbers we've seen today, the next 10 to 15 years, there is a great opportunity for many different sectors in the country, including, of course, the real estate. Mm -hmm. We felt the crisis back in 2007, having no idea about what was coming. And the last two years, of course, we see a lot of changes in our sector. As an example, our company, together with EBRD, Grivalia and Pangea, we have a pi an active pipeline, which is about uh, seven to eight medium to large uh, scale projects. And uh, in reality, what is missing from the market is a number of developers to develop houses and more hospitality and so on. So if we see the, the opportunities after 10 years of uh, suffering in the economy, uh, definitely there is room for everybody. The ones already investing are the ones did the homework and they are coming prepared, they open an office, they employ locals, 
they search the market and then they proceed, like the examples of uh, Pangea, of, uh, sorry, of Oak Tree and many others. So, yes, there is room and opportunity in our sector. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any questions from the floor? interested in investing in real estate and infrastructure. And they have asked me to come here, and I have been following this forum for the last 25 years, uh, to see whom do we talk to. They, some suggestions that I have is the banks, the National Bank of Greece, Eurobank, and, and the rest. They have information. But have you heard you speak? It's a very comforting to me that at least Mackenzie is behind the eight ball, I think, in seeing even unhospitable receptions in Greece, which is unheard of. It's, it's not Greece that they are referring to. But at any event, uh, I'm encouraged by, by Mr. Andronopoulos' uh, presentation and the fact that you see that for the next 12, 15 years, uh, there is good and positive expectations, you know, in real estate development. And they're also interested in infrastructure. My question is, where a person like me that represents X amount of money to come in real estate and infrastructure, infrastructure should I go to, to find help to have the right partners and do the right things since I was born and raised in Greece? But I live in the United States. Well, I, I, I think you, you should aim at, uh, at Mr. Uh, Mr. Chrysikos and Mr. Karitinos, who probably have a large pool of, of investment opportunities for you to, <laughs> to discuss with. I know Mr. Chrysikos or Mr. Karitinos. Well, first of all, you have a, a clear advantage over the foreign investors because we speak the same language. Okay. You know the country very well. So I'm sure that uh, if you look deeply and uh, talk with uh, people either on this panel or with uh, uh, representatives from the, from the banking sector as well as from the government uh, sector, uh, I'm sure that you can find uh, many projects that they're uh, waiting for your money and are very welcome in, in our country uh, to be allocated. And uh, if, if you want, you know, I'm, I'm available to sit down after this uh, panel and uh, discuss. Any, any other question? Okay, Mr. Baldwin. Uh, so that, that, that was an expectation from a foreign investor. So what, what, what do you think uh, foreign investors' expectations are coming into the Greek real estate market? Sure. Um, you know, most of my perspectives on Greece, obviously, are from the outside looking in. Uh, working at Nomura, most of our client conversations are regarding FDI into opportunities including Greece, from hospitality players, quite frankly. Uh, that's relevant for Greece, obviously, because it's a primary industry. Uh, the expectations of most of our investors, which are institutional in nature and often strategic, meaning they own hospitality assets elsewhere in the world and their operators, uh, be they cruise lines, be they casino operators, be they resort operators, be they hotel companies, um, these are companies that are doing their homework, they're watching, they're starting to follow through and have conversations with banks about non-performing loans and perhaps assets that they, they can take off the balance sheet of the banks, perhaps turn around. I think the expectation is one of continued improvement of the overall Greek uh, uh, economy. It's not unnoticed, or let's put it this way, it is to be celebrated that FDI, foreign direct investment into Greece, is up dramatically. It's up 30% year over year. That's a dramatic bounce back. Quite frankly, I don't think 
I could explain in great detail why this is, but it does seem to be mirrored by the uh, incredible strength of the tourism market. Bodies are going, and bodies seem to, you know, 30 million visitors last year. Fifth year in a row that you guys had um, record foreign tourist visitation in Greece. And it's, it's, not, it's not surprising to me that it, at the same time it's mirrored with this dramatic increase in FDI. It's not causality, but it's correlation, okay? When you have an overlay of continued unrest in various tourist markets, they're all of all friends of Greece, but let's face it, there, there is a little bit of a competition. You would think that you're going to have increased visitation, increased inbound tourism, increased hotel yields, increased returns on investment. There's been a lack of new supply coming on in. The examples we talked about are notable because they're standouts, right? It's just beginning. So you're seeing that elasticity of demand starting to accelerate while supply hasn't yet you know, been added to, so to speak. So we're going to see some nice returns, especially in the hospitality sector. I think, as a final comment, I would say that I think foreign investors are very pleased, notwithstanding the political dislocation and the economic dislocation in Greece, that the government has been uh, privatizing key assets in the infrastructure sector, uh, in transport, in ports, and in airports because that is an opportunity to accelerate FDI in degrees. With that investment, we have jobs. That's the key thing that has to come next, which is the improvement of consumer sediment that naturally results from increased job opportunities. So I think people are really gonna be looking at the government at, and the solidity of their continued privatization program uh, in transportation assets. I think that's gonna be something that is gonna kind of be a hallmark of the upcoming year. Thank you. Thank you. We have any questions, maybe? No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Caritinos, uh, uh, Greece should have an, an answer in, in terms of, of investment uh, attractiveness. So how, how do you see real estate investment companies playing a, a role into this answer towards foreign investors? And what should be the next days of real estate investment companies? Actually, uh, with the first part of your question, uh, which is uh, uh, what we need in order to have uh, uh, more investments in Greece, I think that uh, you, you've got to have two things pr practically. You, first of all, you've got to have the right product, which was uh, 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 always a problem in Greece. Now this is getting better. Uh, first of all, I think uh, because of the MPLs, because uh, this gave the opportunity to big names in investing of, uh, you see, big funds to come and invest in Greece indirectly to real estate because of the MPLs by buying uh, portfolios yeah, that are collateralized with, uh, with uh, real estate. Uh, and um, secondly, uh, uh, you've got to have the right environment. Uh, by that, I mean uh, a lot of things. Uh, the most important of which are uh, to have uh, uh, a flexible and, uh, and uh, a helping state that can provide all the help that an investor wants to come in a country like Greece. And definitely we still have problems with bureaucracy and all the rigidities that, uh, uh, that uh, the, the state can create. And... Um, Secondly, we have uh, a heavy taxation for the time being, uh, which also has been imposed, uh, and if not primarily, to the real estate sector. And uh, among uh, them, uh, uh, you see, uh, there was a big hit on, on the REITs, which uh, show their tax regime, which, as you know, is, uh, is a special tax regime all over the world. REITs all over the world are, are tax transparent, and there is a reason for that. The reason is that uh, uh, there are vehicles that uh, can bring uh, uh, FDIs in every country and can help the country to, uh, to grow and the economy to grow. 
So uh, what happened in Greece is that uh, we had a, a taxation that was increased uh, sevenfold uh, for the rich, which uh, uh, can be explained only in a context of uh, an extreme situation that uh, dictated that kind of uh, extreme taxation. But uh, on the other hand, now that uh, uh, Greece is getting better, we expect that uh, uh, it's important to, um, to, to, to have our, the credibility of the country back. And the only way to, to, to do that is to, to amend again this taxation problem. Because a constant question that, to be honest, cannot be directly answered by, by investors is that uh, we've seen in the real estate sector during the crisis to have some uh, uh, investors that, uh, uh, that came into the country, uh, put a lot of money, and uh, uh, they have seen the taxation going up 700%. How can we be persuaded that this cannot happen in the next wave of investors that will come in the country, and then they will be trapped in another wave of taxation? You understand that credibility for foreign investments and stability of the, of the system in general and the legislation and everything is the most important thing. So this is something that we have to work on uh, and uh, we have to do it right away. It's not something that can wait. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hrisikos, uh, do, do you expect that the, the, there is a, a big trend in, in the last couple of years of banks disposing of, of their NPEs? So do you expect that this trend, which will continue uh, anyway in, in the next time, will also affect the real estate market and, and in what ways? And I mean, a, a good example is probably the, the, the merging of, of Grivalia with Eurobank. Uh, well, this is uh, a question more related with uh, the banks going forward, but uh, I will try to, to address it. Uh, the banks uh, are regulated by uh, the central uh, uh, bank in Frankfurt, and they're in position where they are forced to, to clean up their balance sheet and accelerate their reduction in the non-performing exposures. I think going forward, we're going to see the banks uh, taking the initiatives, mainly by using the securitization technique. Uh, I'm sure you are all aware that uh, Eurobank is uh, advancing uh, very fast with the creation of a, of a bad bank by the end of 2019, where uh, the biggest part of the uh, NP uh, exposure will be transferred there. Uh, obviously, the problematic exposures have, uh, in, uh, in almost all the cases, uh, collateral. Uh, in some cases, uh, the collateral is the real estate. Uh, I think that uh, the banks will do their role to try to clean up uh, their balances, and then some new entities will inherit the, uh, the problem and the, the loans, and uh, they will try uh, to maximize the value of the loans and the collaterals without having in their back uh, the regulator uh, pressuring them. So I think we are moving into an era where the Greek banks will uh, try to, to resolve the issue. The issue will be transferred to uh, other entities that uh, uh, will have more flexibility in order to maximize the, the returns. And uh, I think that uh, will create a big uh, market for, for REITs, uh, for real estate investors to participate and uh, generate the returns that they are looking. So going forward, I'm sure that we're going to see much more things happening. Thank you. And Mr. Andriopoulos, uh, are there, uh, I mean, funding is, is, is a basic thing, but do you think, uh, are there any other incentives that were instituted and have helped the Greek real estate market uh, progress, or do you think that there should be some others uh, to, 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 to make uh, uh, the, the climate better for foreign investors? I mean, some examples were uh, golden visas or uh, uh, e-auctions, uh, so 
do you think there, the, the, there is any need for any further structural reforms to help the market, the Greek real estate market? Yeah. I mean, of course, there are a lot of things and maybe new incentives. The government is going to apply this one or the next one. But I'm optimistic, always. And I think uh, if we focus to the negatives, finally, what is the motivation to go ahead? I mean, our business is local and is peculiar everywhere. As an example, as a company, we did a small investment in Sacramento back in 2013 in a land development project with a very strong local developer. We are still waiting for the zoning almost six years later. So in some cases, the same happens in Greece or elsewhere. But to give you a small example of the opportunity the next five to 10 years in Greece, let's discuss a little bit about the city of Athens. Back in 2010, we had on average five million visitors in Athens. This year, the number is going to go up to 12 million visitors. And that number is going to be increasing. Let's think about Venice. 30 million visitors this year. Barcelona, 26. What is missing the brand Athens compared to Barcelona or Venice? Nothing. Maybe as a brand is, a, is, is stronger. So just to satisfy the demand in hospitality um, investments in the city of Athens, according to a very serious research, we need investments in hotels, furnished apartments, and so on for the next 10 to 15 years. So this is where we should concentrate and be active and uh, communicate that message. It's extremely easy to communicate the, the negative stuff of the last 10 years. It is much more difficult, difficult always to communicate the opportunity. And the opportunity is very simple. Thank you. Thank you for the closure. I think it was a good way to, to close this panel. If there are any questions. Thank you.